Welcome back to the final lesson of module four where we examine the use of a small sample uh, T score in order to solve a problem. You will recall that we said earlier that uh, we assume that X bar is a good uh, indicator for mu uh, using the central limit theorem, but we also assume that S is a good indicator of sigma. Now, the smaller the sample gets, of course, the less S can be counted on as a uh, good indicator for sigma, meaning that the uh, score must be expanded some, and for that we use a t-table. Now, in order to help you through this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a small pro problem using a small sample, and we will have the exact same problem we had a minute ago, but in our case, the number is going to be less than 30. 30 generally being the rule of thumb value that means that it is a large sample or above if it's 30 or above, but if it's less than 30, then it's a small sample. An automobile manufacturer claims that the new Cobra EX can go from zero to 80 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. You suspect that this claim is too low. You decide to test this claim using 5% error. Your example, your sample of 15 cars found the sample mean to be 3.65 with a standard deviation of 0 0.2. Now, I want you to notice that you may have only been able to sample 15 cars because of the cost, because of the time. There are many things that could cause you to use a small sample. Now, first you read for information. In reading for information, we see that X bar is 3.65, the uh, S is uh, 0 0.2, the number in the sample is 15, and alpha equals 0.05. Our, our population mean, 3.65, our population sample stevi standard deviation, 0 0.2, the number in the sample 15, and the error equals 0.05. Now, now begin your work on the six-step plan. And you remember you state the null, state the alternative, establish the critical value, find the test research, draw your conclusion, and write your findings into statements. The only difference in a small sample and a large sample is that you have to establish the critical value using a T-score rather than your Z critical value. That's the only difference. You're, that you'll do it, your, your null hypothesis is mu equals 3.5. Uh, the alternate hypothesis is mu is greater than 3.5 because you believe 3.5 is too low. Uh, you establish the critical value. And here's what you do. Instead of a Z critical value, we're going to find the critical value using a T table. Now to start with, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the Z critical value first. And we know that the Z critical value of, uh, for 0 0.005 one tail test is 1.645. We will use the 1.645 right here to help us find the, the value that we should use. We have 15 in our sample, so our degrees of freedom is 15 minus one, which is 14. We read across and the critical value that we're going to use is 1.761. I want you to observe in this that uh, the, uh, the Z-score is 1.645, but we expanded it some using a T-table because our sample was less than 30. So we're in, we're in pretty good shape with that. Hypothesis step uh, using a six-step plan. We got the null hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis. The critical value becomes 1.7. 761 because our sample is small. Uh, we draw the picture because the picture helps. We find the test and research statistic. That means what, what did the test tell us? And we use that formula. We solve it just as we did before and we get a value of 167.7, 167.7. 167 which falls way out into the reject region. We draw our conclusion, Z-test falls outside the boundary in the error portion, so we reject H0, and we write the, the findings into statements. The analysis of 15 vehicles indicates that the Cobra EX goes from zero to 80 in more than 3.5 seconds, and the manufacturer's claim is incorrect. The Cobra EX takes more than 3.5 seconds to go from zero 
to 80 miles per hour. Now, I want you to notice that the problem was done exactly like it would be done with a large sample, except that our critical value required us to use a t student's t-table. And to do that, we found the z critical value. We located that at the bottom. Then we identified the degrees of freedom. And we read the table to find the critical value that we would use. Again, the six-step plan, state the null, state the alternate, establish the critical value, find the test, research statistic, draw your conclusion, and write your findings into statements. Drawing the picture of the steps three, four, and five really helps. It helps you do your work properly. Now, you're making good headway. I just want you to keep the faith. You've got this. You can do this. You're doing well.